Welcome everyone to my online course for research methods in psychology. My name is Frank Lociavo and I will be your tour guide today. I have lots of things planned for us, so just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. In this video, I'm going to introduce myself and I'll also provide a little bit more detail about who I am. Then we'll discuss why it's important to study the research methods that psychologists use. And really the short answer is that a good understanding of research methods will change your life. Because a good understanding of research methods will change the way you think. More on that a bit later. For now, let me introduce you to my family. This is my website and here's my family. These pictures are a few years old, but I like them and I've been too lazy to update them. That's me with my wife, Rhonda. She's beautiful. That's my stepdaughter, Sharon, and my granddaughter, Piper. They're both beautiful as well. We're all really very lucky because we have a wonderful, loving little family. Let me tell you a little bit more about me. As most of you know, I'm a psychology professor at Ohio University. My home campus is at OU Zanesville, which of course is in Zanesville, Ohio. I'm beginning my 25th year. So I know a few things about teaching and teaching online. In fact, I've been teaching online courses for over 20 years, so you're in good hands. I'm a social psychologist, which means I know a lot about people and how they interact with each other. And if you check me out on Google Scholar, which I'll click on right here, you'll see I've published several papers over the past several decades. So I have a good understanding of the overall research process, and I'm really looking forward to teaching you about research methods in psychology. So let's get to work. For now, I'd like to discuss why it's important to study research methods. Previously, I mentioned that a good understanding of research methods will change your life because a good understanding of research methods will change the way that you think. In fact, the first chapter of our textbook is entitled Psychology is a Way of Thinking. It's probably more accurate to say that science is a way of thinking and that psychologists think scientifically. The bottom line is that they flex their mental muscles by reading about and conducting research studies. So in addition to teaching or conducting therapy sessions or consulting in the business world, psychologists are busy discovering new things about human thought and behavior. They're adding to what we know about psychology by conducting research studies on human beings. They observe people, they test people, they talk to people, they measure people in a variety of ways. In other words, they use a variety of research methods to learn about people, and we'll discuss several of those methods in this course. As you learn about research methods, you'll better appreciate scientific reasoning, and you'll begin to develop what I call a scientific attitude. Trust me, my friends, you want to have a scientific attitude. You want to be a scientific thinker in today's world. That's because scientific thinking will boost your intellectual capabilities. That's the truth, people, so trust me, you want to take this opportunity this semester very seriously. As we discuss scientific reasoning and research methods, I think it's helpful to know that scientific reasoning works wonders in everyday life. And that's because it's not natural to think scientifically. So when you do think scientifically, you essentially develop superhuman powers. Now, you need to be realistic, of course, but your capacity to engage in complex reasoning will increase. And that's because scientific reasoning is based on systematic observation and measurement. So in other words, scientific reasoning is based on looking at things and measuring things so that we can understand how those things work. Let me give you a simple example of how systematic observation and measurement has helped me in my everyday life. Personally, I keep my cars for a long time, so every now and then I need to troubleshoot various problems. At one point, my left turn signal wasn't working, so I replaced the bulb, but unfortunately that didn't fix it. So I used scientific reasoning and experimental methods to help assess what was going on. First, I wanted to know if the bulb on the left side, the bulb that was not flashing, would work on the right side of the car. So I installed that left side bulb on the right side of the car and it worked. So I discovered that the left side bulb was good even though it wasn't flashing on the left side of the car. That meant that both bulbs, the left side and the right side, were fine. 
To help you better understand what I did next, let me show you something. Each bulb plugs into a socket. So next I hypothesized that maybe the left side socket was bad. So I switched the left side and right side sockets. And guess what I found? After I switched the sockets, the right side turn signal didn't work. So at that point, I was confident that both bulbs were fine, but that one of the sockets, the original left side socket, was bad. Do you see how systematically manipulating the parts and then observing the results helped me determine, with great confidence really, what was wrong with the turn signal? Of course, I replaced the damaged left side socket, and now both sides work as they should. My point for sharing this fascinating story is that scientific reasoning can help you better navigate the challenges of your everyday life. So in this class, you'll develop habits that will help you think more systematically, more clearly, more efficiently. In this class, you'll develop thinking strategies that will lead you closer to finding the truth about virtually anything, psychology or otherwise. Speaking of psychology, let's bring this discussion back to psychology. Almost everything we know about psychology is based on research studies that have been conducted and then summarized into research reports, with those reports shared via conference presentations or published in journal articles or in books. For example, a few students and I published the results of an experiment where we tested to see if thermal imaging could be used to detect deception. It was really a very fascinating research study, and we learned that thermal imaging might have at least some utility in detecting deception. And of course, you've learned about fascinating research in some of your classes already. For example, in introductory psychology, you probably learned about Stanley Milgram's research on obedience to authority. Using a realistic looking shock generator, Milgram had an experimenter order everyday typical people to administer shocks to a man who was wired up and strapped down in the next room. That, my friends, was one wild research study. As you probably know, Milgram discovered that good people will harm other people when an authority figure tells them to do so. That's scary stuff. And his research has taught us a lot about human behavior. Milgram shared his results via conference presentations, journal articles, and in books. To truly understand the research he conducted and the evidence that research provides, you need to understand the strengths and the weaknesses of the methods he used to collect the data. He conducted an amazing research study, but it wasn't perfect. Like most research studies, it had flaws, so there were some limitations that needed to be placed on the results. Regardless, you need to understand that scientific reasoning is superior to common sense because common sense and folk wisdom often lead us astray. Truth be told, scientific research can lead us down the wrong path as well, but you'll soon learn that the scientific process is self-correcting. If we originally get it wrong, like determine that the Earth is flat, then over time, other scientists will try to replicate our work and will eventually discover the truth. So, my friends, in this class, I'll help you develop a scientific attitude. You'll discover that it's healthy to be skeptical. You'll learn that it's smart to critically evaluate research claims and that it's always wise to demand evidence over opinions. And beyond that, I hope you'll realize that conducting research and reading about new research discoveries is fun. Many students are bitten by the research bug during their required undergraduate research methods class in college. And I hope you get bitten and that this class sparks your love of scientific research. Well, that's it for this section, but stay tuned because I'll have more to say about research methods in the next video.